All right, my friend, I am going to give you 10 tips for longevity of your marriage. I have been married going 46 years in four weeks. So that should give me a little bit of credibility and talking about some do's and don'ts in marriage. I've also been a, a marriage counselor, marriage officer for a couple of decades. That also give me a little bit of access into an insight into some of the things that we should or should not do in our marriages if we want them to last. Number one, make sure you are ready for changing your life and your lifestyle because that will inevitably happen. Once you take on a partner, your life changes dramatically instantly. So make sure you are ready for the change of a lifestyle before you decide to get married. Because when you do, it will change. And for some people, drastically. Number two, marry someone you genuinely love. If you marry for other reasons, those reasons might change, God forbid, and then you are not at a good place because what you marry for is no longer there. So there is nothing to keep you motivated and excited and want to hold it together. So make sure you genuinely love the person that you're going to be marrying. Number three, understand the difference between a male and a female, their thinking process. They do not think alike. They cannot think alike, even though they may agree on a few things, but fundamentally, the thinking, the thought process, they are different male and female, not because one is good or one is bad or one is better, but because of how they are created, male and female, they are different. They see things different. They talk about things different. They conclude things different. They assess things different. And so we need to have an understanding of both the difference in how they think so that we can complement each other and not just simply oppose and become disgust of the other. Number four, build trust in each other. Trust is a significant factor in marriages if they are going to work. Every relationship need trust, my friend. And so if you trust each other, then you'll have a more comfortable life because you won't be on edge. You won't be worried. Without trust, everybody becomes uncomfortable and their imaginations run wild. And so they create problems for themselves and problems for each other. There is a, a, a frequent thing that there are some people said, you know, I, I, I sneak into my husband's phone, I sneak into my wife's phone, and I find out who he's texting him or texting her, who is calling him or calling her. My friend, trust will el el eliminate, trust will eliminate the, the, the concerns for that. All right. So build trust on that. My wife has her phone. I have my phone. We have passwords for our phone. We never look for each other's phone to see what's in it. Even if I take my wife's phone to do something, I don't even scroll it If I, I because she often asks me to do something on her phone. But I don't even scroll her phone to see what's going on in there. She doesn't do, do that either. We don't do things like those and uh, because we trust each other. And because of that, our relationship is not under stress. Number five, don't try to change your spouse. No one wants to be changed by the other person. We got to come to some common understanding of what will work for us. And we're going to meet each other pathway and we're going to make it work. Number six, meet each other halfway. Don't expect only to receive and not to give. You ought to be a giver and a receiver because no one wants to feel as if he or she is being used. So if one person keeps giving, 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 and not getting, eventually that person is going to feel the pressure that they are being used 
and there's not a balance in the relationship. So that is important to meet each other halfway. Number seven, compliment each other on their achievements or when they have done something good. Be there for your spouse in the good times and in the bad times, in the highs and in the lows. When they're having a good day, be there. When they're having a bad day, be there. You got to be there uh, to compliment each other. For example, things are in order. You know, you come from work and things are in order. You come from work and somebody cook and something tastes good. Compliment each other. Let each other feel appreciated in the relationship. That will also relax the mind and the tension. Number eight, do not keep rehashing things of the past that cause pain, anger, disappointment, frustration, etc. You don't need to prove how wrong your spouse is in order to show how right you are. Sometimes we say we forgive, but we don't forget. We don't let go. And sometimes we kind of stockpile the past. We bring back everything that happened in the past so that it can give us a stronger voice to prove now that the other person is so wrong and such a bad partner in the relationship. Don't keep rehashing because people don't want to be reminded of mistakes they have made and they want to move on. So if you want your relationship to last and to grow, don't keep on reacting of the yesterday and the yester week, yester month and yester years. All right. Number nine, do not live your lives on edge. When your life is on edge, everything bothers you. You are worried and frustrated and angry about every little thing when your lives get on edge. The Bible says we shouldn't let, our, let the, the sun go down on our wrath. We should have things settled. We shouldn't allow ourselves to be, to be on the edge in our lives that everything bothers us. The thing that you used to be, you know, let it go by. It is, oh, not a big deal. All of a sudden. What never used to be a molehill becomes a mountain now that you can climb. So my friends, don't ever get your lives on edge because when your life is on edge, things that you could let go all of a sudden now become stress and burden that you can't bear. And number 10, share your time with each other. Share time with each other doing something that your spouse likes, even if you don't like it. Spend some time with them. For example, guys like sports and all the other things, and the girls like other more intimate things, uh, of relational things, you know, and, and sometimes the guys don't want to watch that and the girl don't want to watch the sport. Listen, give time. Make the sacrifice to spend some time with your spouse on the things that he likes or she likes, whether it's an activity or just a sport or etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Give some time and that will reciprocate. And you might su be surprised to know that the very thing you didn't like, you grow into liking it. You'll be surprised, but the sacrifice is necessary to do that. All right. These are only 10 tips in longevity of your marriage. I know I always say to to uh, to couples honeymoons are the shortest time of your marriage. When the honeymoon is over and you come back to ground, now marriage is work and you have to be determined to make it work. All right? So those are 10 tips for the longevity of your marriage and I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the bell so you can be notified when I do another uh, live broadcast or when I upload another video. I guarantee you there have been more tips. I hope these have been a blessing and an inspiration to you and also will open your eyes to say, how can what can I do to make my marriage last longer? And look forward to seeing you next time. 
Tell your friends about it. Share it with somebody. Like it. Subscribe. Come back. There will be more. I look forward to seeing you again on another set of tips for the longevity of your marriage.